that the cement is always wet, right? Because the moment that the cement dries, it means that you're fixed. You're you're standing in place. You're not going anywhere, right? So, what I like about working that way is that if I work digitally, my 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 mind is is. It's too efficient, and it's already done. The cement is dry. You're going to go with this, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. if I've erased it, you know, I've effectively burned the bridge behind me. So I now have to figure out a new way, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. there, therefore, the, the cement is always wet. If I'm working traditionally, as long as there's an eraser there, and as long as the thing is erased, and I have no way to get that back, I can figure out a new way, a new a new thing,、sure. right? And and I think that has made The joys of it, so much fun, man. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Yo, yo, yo. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. This has got to be episode three hundred by now, right? Are we done? Isn't、this、that is what a, we said? Three hundred. This is the final episode. This is、yeah. the end of the Ink Pulp Podcast.、Uh, thank you all、we、for joining call us.、It. Boys, you both look good. <laughs> You're just、ah, lying. You, you look, you look healthy. <laughs> you look、uh, well adjusted, physically and emotionally, psychologically. You can see that. Okay, he's talking about Sean. I got it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You guys you're look the, good. You're the most、uh, mentally healthiest one of the three. Yeah,、that's, I think so. That's Mateo. Maddie. I think you have no emotional problems. You have a grasp of every、uh, action that you're doing. Subliminal. No, actually, to be honest with you, lately I've been having like some some issues, which are solved、Uh-oh. now. And it's、Uh-oh. no. Check it's out his girlfriend like... and his kid really quick, though. Just really <laughs> quick. <laughs> well, by the time they see the the episode, they'll be too late. They'll be. <laughs> 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 they'll be what? They'll be what? cut into pieces and、uh, <laughs> long gone. <laughs> Let's go. They're not going to be in my fridge anymore. <laughs> You'll have eaten them by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd, he'd have eaten and pooped them out by then. <laughs> so, Seriously, no, you all right? What's going the, on? No, 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 nothing special. I just,、um, I, I, I dealt with the problem now, so now it's solved. But it's interesting because it's kind of connected with, with what we've been talking about lately, with both Scotty and、uh, and Jim. But I, I'll get to that.、Hmm. Uh, so、okay. basically, like lately, I've been kind of,、uh, I don't know how to say it, but. Sort of angry all the time because、oh, I felt、oh, that、uh, I wasn't getting enough time to work on my book, and I felt that everything else was getting in the way of、uh, me, you know, getting my work done on the book. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Are you talking about family getting in the way or other projects? Like everything, in the way? everything was in the way. Like even if I had to go somewhere.、Mm. I would be pissed because just the drive would take fifteen minutes, and I'd be pissed. So, yeah, everything was yeah. in the way. So, and、yeah. uh, and I complained with that、uh, about that with my my therapist, and I was like, "Fuck,、mm. I'm getting so angry, and everything seems to be getting in the way of me getting my work done. I hate everyone. I hate everything." And then, like, it took me a couple of weeks, and then I realized that I was just projecting. I was just mad at myself because what I did、oh, lately、shit. is that I've accepted like three covers that I shouldn't have accepted, basically, and those yeah. Yeah. like were getting in the way, especially because the first one that I decided to do was taking too much time. Because it's basically、um, it's a teenage mutant ninja turtles. I don't know if I can say it, but I think that by the time yeah, when this right. episode comes out, probably it would be out. I don't know. So basically, they're relaunching them. So I agreed yeah, yeah. on doing a cover for it,、mm-hmm. and、uh, 
but it's um it's an IP like it's it's owned by a, corp- a corporation. Yeah. So the whole process like it's so slow, way slower than the usual process for a a normal cover where you just go through, you know, your editor for a yeah. you know, for a publisher. Yeah. So And just to give people hold on Maddie, just to give people who don't understand what working with an IP is like, it's like they're very protective of it, right? They want to make sure that it's aligned to whatever sort of guidelines that they have. So the part that slows IP work down is like there's a bunch of different checks and heaven forbid it has to go through like a department that's going to end up using it for something like a like a towel or like a, a lunchbox yeah, and it goes un- through another check so it gets it gets it's really process heavy and depending on what state of mind you're in if you're not prepared for it, it gets frustrating I'm sorry Mandy I cut you off go ahead yeah no 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 worries so basically what happens is that I've accepted it out of enthusiasm because I'm a mm-hmm. huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, you know, mm-hmm. they used to watch the, the 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 cartoon, the TV show. Yeah, I think when I was a kid, same so say we all are. Yeah, so I was super pumped about doing a cover for it. So yeah, but then the whole process started, and not only that, yeah. there's another process, meaning that I live in Italy, so there's a time difference. So basically, mm-hmm. what happens is that every time I whatever I send a layout for the cover. Then they get it, and then, and basically they get it when it's evening here. So the day is already over. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. they have to share it with. In this case, it's Nickelodeon, which, which mm-hmm. is the one that owns the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, brand, basically. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. every time I would have to wait like three days for approval because of this, the right. whole process. Yep. And I was getting like, to me, they're just again w- weird, you know, notes about stuff like the gums, yeah, uh, of the turtle that you shouldn't show their gums or whatever, you know, which I understand. I, I don't have anything <laughs> against that. Like, it's it's <laughs> part of the process, and yeah. uh, and so on. So that that was the first cover, and then at the same time, I started working on other covers. And especially one, there's mm-hmm. a lot of things to be in, you know, reviewed about it. So the whole mm-hmm. process of just doing covers, which in my head would take like, I don't know, one week I can do three covers if if everything, yeah. you know, goes smooth. It started being yeah. one week and then another week. Yeah. So basically I was mad at myself for mm-hmm. accepting, you know, for you know, yeah. taking those those gigs. But I wasn't yeah. able to process that. So once I processed that, I was like, okay, so this this whole thing is basically my responsibility. So once I made peace yeah. with that, I was like, okay, you know what? I'll just do this covers. And whenever I finish, yeah. I finish. And uh, yeah. and that's it. So now I'm, you know, I'm still yeah. in the weeds of it. So it's it's still hard because it's taking a lot of time. Yeah. But uh, I got yeah. rid of the of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one. I had to change plans because at, at first I was so enthusiastic that I thought, okay, I'm going to paint this one. And then by the end of the process, I was like, you know, guys, I, I've, I had already done like a, a, a color test and everything, a quick color test with Photoshop. Mm-hmm. But I ended up mm-hmm. saying like, you know mm-hmm. what, Let's, I'll just think it. Let's have like, I don't have any more energies for this cover. So... I had yeah. to, you know, yeah. make peace with that, and just I'll have a colorist yeah. doing with it, dealing with that. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this whole thing made me think again about the the seeking opportunities and the ability mm-hmm. of you know reading situations, and 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 how yeah. sometimes this thing could can become a double edged sword, because yeah. Every time, the, the fact that I accept these covers is not because of money or I just, every time some somebody, you know, pro- proposes me to do something some, and gives me an offer, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. my head starts thinking about all the possible options that I have from this cover. Mm-hmm. From an artistic mm-hmm. point of view, meaning that 
again with with mm-hmm. the turtles i was like you know what i'm gonna paint this one it's gonna be technical because it's four character with different colors there's a lot of green so i gotta study a nice solution and blah 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 and then there was no character studies yet so i was like you know what maybe if i'm quick to deliver and they like my design maybe they'll ask me to do the design for them if they don't have an artist for it yet <laughs> you know which is not gonna happen i know yeah. that but that's where my brain goes immediately goes yeah you yeah. know this this huge think about this huge river that divides in a thousand different rivers that's what happens in my head so <laughs> yeah, i yeah. think of all of the yeah. opportunities yeah. that w- this cover cover alone alone will give me you know so mm-hmm. and and sometimes it you know it's it fires uh, uh, it backfires is that the right term mm-hmm. so this yeah, uh yep. this thing yeah. that i'm really happy that i have i i think it's uh it's what provides me with the career that i have because i i, I was always good yeah. at you know seeking opportunity and, and finding opportunity even in things that apparently didn't offer a lot of them yeah. at the same time in this case especially is biting me in the ass because it's yeah. keeping me away from my project for, uh, it's been keeping me away f- from my project for a long period of time. So it's, uh, yeah. ah, fuck, I had, I had to make peace yeah. with the fact that I made this time, probably my choices weren't the smartest, but uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll never stop being who I am. Like next, yeah. tomorrow, if they ask me to uh, cover again, I'll, I'll have to fight that internal listing to them again. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think yeah. I Dude, think that's, that's a hard instinct that's to fight. Amazing, yeah, yeah. I'll tell yeah. you, the awareness you have about this is incredible because that headspace that you were in, where you were angry at everything, I lived in that space for a really long time and, and didn't come to that self awareness for a very long time. So it's amazing that you were able to come to that so so quickly. Yeah, that's well, right. yeah. Let me, I had let me follow up on what as I Mateo mentioned just earlier. Right, like, right. I sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll do it real quick. But I no, had I help. Right, like, go, go, go. I had a therapist listening to me, and, and and I remember she was like, after the the first session, she was like, "Okay, so we've been talking about this thing, and you seem a little bit too angry. Like, I understand the frustration, but the anger is a little bit too much. So I think there's something yeah. more behind it. So she helped yeah. me." focus yep. on that thing instead of just yep. okay you're angry because this is this is that that you listed so it's okay. fine as long as you you know it, it will you know yeah it'll be over soon and instead she she decided to stop on that feeling and and help me help me analyze it properly understand and by it, the yeah. third yeah. fourth session she was like okay you know what like i think I'm starting to think that it comes from you. Like you probably met at something else. So you got to check on what mm-hmm. you're met for. Mm-hmm. And, and and then I started yeah. thinking, I was like, oh shit, right. I met him myself. So I was, yeah. I'm, I'm saying this just to, to confirm the fact that probably if, if I didn't get somebody else, you know, intervening and trying to analyze this thing, probably I would have never got to the point where I got. Yeah, that's great. I think, yeah, let me, there's a lot to, to talk about there. One, I think that my, my mother-in-law has a term, um, in as far as like getting frustrated with a situation, yours is a bit more nuanced, Mateo, which is like, you have a picture in your head of how things are supposed to be. And then there's this thing that plays out, which is not exactly the picture and your brain is having a hard time negotiating. Adjusting. Wait, this is the thing yeah. that I wanted. Right. And but this is the thing that's happening. So that's that's pretty interesting. The cool thing is that you do have the the safety, the safety valve, the you know what I mean, to be able to turn to somebody and be like, hey, I, this is what I'm feeling. Um, and then you guys go and go through the process of like, actually, Mateo, it's this or you landed it on your own. But I don't want to lose the the I think the part that I'm really focusing on is that no matter what we end up talking about, you always somehow bring up the fact that you're doing a ton of covers and it's really an asshole move. You know what I mean? Like no matter what, no matter what fucking happens, 
You know what I mean? Like we could be uh, talking about this, this is a serious subject matter. I love the fact that you're talking about like, hey, I'm going through this and I'm reflecting and blah, blah, blah. But at the top level, at the very beginning, you just couldn't help yourself, which is like, hey, by the way, I'm doing a ton of covers, you guys, you know, and I'm really popular yeah, right now. Basically, Mateo, you sound like a privileged asshole complaining. <laughs> Not <a> kidding. Yeah. <laughs> really kidding. <laughs> we might first work problems. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's really amazing that you have that. Uh, well, for, I guess at the end of the day, it's just be, I think the reason why it all the, the, an added layer is that you really want to get to this project. You know what I mean? Like if, if it didn't bother oh, yeah. you or if you didn't want yeah. to get to it, it wouldn't bother you so much. You know what I'm getting at? Like yeah. if you're like, eh, it's kind of whatever, I'll get to it when I get to it. But there is something in the back of your mind that's going like, hey, man, we're supposed to be doing this instead. And you're, you know, you're you're distracting yourself with all of these other things. Then it just compounds from there, sort of, you know, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, not yeah, cool, but it's good yeah, that you're yeah, reflecting yeah. on it, you know. I think that, and, 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 you know, I think Eric, you can attest to that. Like you need, if you have a book and I mean, you, you have your book, but you were doing other, you know, gigs and other jobs at yeah. the same time. So it's different probably. But uh, when you have your book, uh, there's a, there's a point in which you have to be your little, you have to wake up your little inner Hitler Meaning that you have to, <clears throat> you have, you have to have this inner Eric, voice that just, tells. Did you just call Eric a little Hitler? Is that what you did? You no, no, Eric you meaning Hitler. a generic you. I was talking about myself <laughs> as know. well. I know. Meaning that I was kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> no, Eric is our little Pol Pot, not not Hitler. For you know. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean. Meaning, I mean, considering your ethnicities, like Paul Pot is more on point for you. But so, no, again, you, you got to have their inner friend. voice. It's really difficult to be your friend. Yeah. <laughs> so you need you need to have your an inner voice that at a certain point should intervene and say, all right, kids, you we've been having fun. Now the fun is over and we got to deliver. Otherwise, you'll end up, yeah. you know, doing what a million other artists do, and they, you know, they start, I, I don't know, dissolving energies in a thousand different rivers, and they never get to finish yeah. what yeah. they've started, oh, wow. you know. And we we have yeah. you that know plenty of of great examples of that through throughout history in comic books. So yeah. I don't want to end up. I think generally, what ends up happening is you have a goal, right? And something is preventing you from, so you, you generate an energy behind accomplishing that goal. But occasionally there's a mental, psychological, right? Something, there's a roadblock that makes you not go start that goal, not even accomplish it, just, just start it, right? Yep. The problem is you still have that energy, right? You built up a, a, a whatever, a, a reserve to specifically put into accomplishing that goal right but yeah. in, but because you don't start but because you didn't get on the path of going there that energy still exists and it needs to exert itself in some capacity right but because yeah. it's not being put into the very specific thing that it was generated for it creates a frustration right yeah. uh, you're, you're either saying hey i'm just you know biding my time i'm putting it into this something else and eventually as soon as you repurpose it into that thing it gives you a level of fulfillment because that's what it was made for right there's a different yep. sort of like feeling when you're working on something even though you're not like getting it right as long as it's the thing that the energy was generated for it feels so much more fulfilling at least in my experience right so yeah, i think yeah, it, no, it, a lot absolutely. of people are like hey i get frustrated because you know i'm working on x y and z um and you're like yeah but you're not that's not what you you set yourself up for you know, like yeah. you generated, developed and, and put this battery into reserve and now you're tapping into it, but you're using that energy for something else. That's why it feels unfulfilling, you know? Yeah. Potentially. Yeah, At least that's how I see it. Yeah. And it translates to, to other parts of your life in the end, because uh, what happens is that, you know, uh, at least this is what I've noticed when I was working on, on, on my on. book. Hold on. Before like, I, you're about to get into something yeah. deep, right? 
But I don't know how many times Sean has to lift up that like branded yeah. fucking cup Fuck, man. into the goddamn shot, you know, like <laughs> Sean. Or another good idea would be to apply that sticker to an empty one just for showing and then use the other one and to drink with the the one with eyes so every time you have to show you know it what? you don't you know what make that you know annoying what? fucking you know noise you know <laughs> no. you know clinkity what? clink clink look at this fucking cup I, that i, I have got, look look i've just got one thing to say Go ahead. fuck both of you no come on we're trying to help <laughs> you it. brand better <laughs> but it's so like it's literally this, you know, like clink, 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 look at the thing that I'm thinking. And my my you could live literally told Jamie, hey Jamie, at the beginning of this thing, let's do a bumper for the sticker. We don't have to interrupt Mateo's re I think it's heartfelt. He's never been this sort of like open and deliberate and articulated about this thing that he's going through. In my through. own life, probably. And you're <laughs> And in, 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 well, at the very least in this podcast, and you're sitting there with fucking jingle bells, just like chinka chinka ching. Let's talk about reindeer and this sticker, you know? Jesus Christ, Sean. <laughs> All right, I lost the I lost the roadmap. Go ahead, Maddie. You were talking about it. No, what I was saying is that what I've noticed is that when I'm doing the book, so and therefore I'm using that energy that I have in the storage room. I'm using it for my book. Yeah. And I'm able to yeah. work enough hours during the day. When I finish, yeah. when my day is over, even though I'm not thinking about finishing necessarily one page, is uh, this guy fucking Jesus Christ? <laughs> All right, well, wait, wait, hold on noises. here, hold on here. <laughs> he has to make no, noises. No, 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 fuck both of you. Otherwise, this is because Eric. I just saw that Eric messaged me to forward the link to Francis. So I'm sitting here scrambling, wondering if Francis got the link. What do I got to do? You motherfuckers don't realize what I'm doing behind the scenes here. So fuck you and fuck you. Okay, Sean. Okay, let's analyze that. Okay, since you got really mad. Like you said, you were checking stuff. Like on, you were checking stuff on a computer. So how checking stuff on a computer makes so much fucking noise? Explain to me. I'm checking shit on my phone, dum-dum. Yeah, but the noise was <laughs> because I dropped my have, phone. You have a noisy. Yeah, okay, that because you're a fucking. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Bleep that, Jamie. Or or can we say it now? Nowadays, <laughs> we, uh, you can, pal. You know, there's this thing. I don't know if you saw in the email, Maddie, that I'm trying to give a little bit more of a. A professional yeah, 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 anytime that. Really we send out this link. So I'm trying there was a part there, to be honest with you, where I there was a and I wanted to run this by you guys before I included it because I didn't want you to guys to fucking like roll your eyes at me. But there's a there was a bullet point that I omitted for this version. I think I'm thinking about putting it back in and it speaks to where you're coming from right now, which is we talk very frankly and openly on this podcast. And sometimes the rhetoric goes right into that space where society has told you, hey, that's not a good thing to say. Now, we don't cross into a like into the no, no land. Right. Like you, you've used mm -hmm. Nazi. We do it privately. Before, right. And like, but yeah, yeah, we do. Absolutely. We, behind the scenes <laughs> and, and not in public, but we just shrug at it. Right. But also, like, I would, I, the reason why I took it off is because, like, I would hope before they jump on this show and they torpedo their <laughs> fucking career, you know, our guests know, right, that yeah. we talk, yeah, at, yeah. you know, we, we, there's, there's certain threshold that we cross into that some people are like, oh, you shouldn't say or, or you know, you shouldn't use those terms anymore. It's yeah, up yeah. to you to use that, right? Like, I don't know, man. Like, me personally, I take no offense, but 98% of the public either genuinely take offense or they take offense in lieu of somebody else taking offense at something. You know, like, yeah. they don't really care about it, but somebody told them it was a bad idea. So now they're going to start spouting it, you know? Yeah. But again, going back to the, the, the whole thing, like, if you have a problem with it, it's your problem. It's not going to be our, our problem, you know? That's it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, Going back real quick to what I was saying, Sean, are you are you good or you have to do some more noise? Grasp the phone with both it? hands, Sean. Do not drop <laughs> I, that. Phone. I have the phone in both hands. I'm I'm talking to Francis, trying to figure out where what's going on. But right. Go ahead. He, go ahead. He's doing behind the scenes <laughs> stuff, is what he's saying. Go ahead, Maddie. So no, basically, what I've noticed is that when I when I use the energies properly, 
the, when, <laughs> when the day is over, it is really over. So I'm able to be into what I'm doing next, which is, yes. you know, being with my family, for example, yeah. and play yeah. with my kid and whatever, like yeah. being really present in, yeah. in the moment, which is an exercise that I'm trying to do as much as I can in life, just being yeah. the moment, whatever you do. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and yeah, so since I, I wasn't able, I, I haven't been able during this last three weeks to, you know, channel those energies properly. Um, I'm realizing that, you know, I'm not able to be in the moment with all the rest on my life, you know, yeah. so it's affecting yeah. because you're because a you're in the back of your mind. It, yeah, you left something that you didn't do, right? You were like, yeah. "Hey, I didn't yeah. do something," and so yeah. I, you know, my brain isn't even here because it's still in the yeah. office somewhere. It's still at your draft. Yeah, table or it's yeah. partially there, but it's not yeah. there the way I wanted it to be there. You know, exactly. No, I feel that. Yeah. There's plenty of times when my wife will catch me being frustrated or just like, you know, uh, uh, broadcasting that frustration onto somebody else, which is really unfair. And then she goes like, you okay? You know, did you, is there something in that you need to get done? And it really is a moment of like reflection where I go like, oh, right. Because I spent the better part of the today, like emailing people or, you know, and I really, really, and I told you guys this, I really love drawing, you know? So when I don't get to draw for a, a, I don't even know what appropriate amount of time is, but I feel like I need to draw for X amount of length of time before I feel like, okay, yeah, I, I, I've drawn today. You know, like if I don't cross that, it feels so weird to me where I'm just doing administrative mm. and like typing away at stuff, which I know is necessary. So I almost have to do it at the beginning of the day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I need to tell myself, hey, six hours of your eight hour day or 10 hour day for today, you're actually returning emails or doing, you know, like doing administrative stuff, like behind the scenes, like, you know, uh, uh, technical stuff, not actually drawing. I had to set that expectation up early so that by the end yeah. of the day, I don't feel like, oh yeah, I missed out on something, you know, yeah, yeah, Sean, absolutely. all yeah. of this makes sense from a, like, uh, like, are you hearing Mateo talk? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's amazing to to hear him be this level of reflective and then this level of like exalted and elevated because he's like, oh, I recognize this in myself. Right. Are you digesting any and all of this, man? Are you like, I I, I understand what you're saying there. You're, you're, yeah. you're telling me that I need to learn from this. That's what you're uh, yeah. saying. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's an opportunity to, to like, Hey, look, I, that think, guy's doing I it. think I've grown quite a bit in the past couple of years. And I think mm -hmm. my, I'm getting much better at these things. Okay, good. Because the, the first five minutes that he was talking, Jamie, I want you to cut to the, like the footage where Sean yawns through it. Like he just lets out a yawn or I'm like, I don't think he cares about what Mateo's saying. <laughs> Cut to it, Jamie, like right now, right? I'm prompting it like right M now. Yep. And I was getting like... To me, they're just, again, weird, you know, notes about stuff. Like, Mateo, you know it. what he's doing, right? You know what he's doing, Mateo? <laughs> You're aware of this. Please, this if you find that, Jamie, plan. do it in slow-mo. Like... Yeah. There's no <laughs> yawn. There's, there is no yawn. Eric is making there it is up. A yawn. There is uh, no yawn. Marker it right now. Like literally at when it's happening, I want you to like, you know, you do the little, you know, boop, like there and then replay it to right now. Anyway, Francis is coming. I'm going to reintroduce yeah, another Filipino me. into this conversation. Here we go. One, two, three. There hey, he is. there he is. Yo! <laughs> Guys, I, I am so sorry, man. I apologize. I, uh... Oh, no. We, we, we've been having no, a no shit problem, show man. here. So you're saving us right now. Dude. Thank you for being here. Thank uh, you for making time. Yeah, are we all doing uh, portrait mode? Actually, no, I don't know how to do it. That's okay, buddy. No, no, you're no. We're all, all right. in landscape. No, you're fine. Only in landscape. It only looks like portrait on your screen, but it's going to be uploading the footage into landscape, landscape so you're good. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. I, I, so I, I didn't make it to the studio. Um, so I'm, that's why I'm just running on my phone. And I guess off my phone, I needed an app. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. You're okay. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Don't kid, apologize. Kid stuff. I want to know, let's stuff. celebrate the this fact is what that we you're were talking here about, actually. And I don't have to spend the next 30 minutes just pointing out how Sean hates his own show and he tries to like, you know, scuttle scuttle it at every opportunity. 
<laughs> Francis, you didn't see it, but maybe when you watch this episode, I want you to confirm. Yeah. So Mateo opens the conversation. Let me let me catch you up. Mateo opens the conversation okay. with being really heartfelt, really reflective about like where he was mentally and why it was causing him enough frustration to the point where he was outwardly showing a level of like anger towards his situation, whatever he may be, he just couldn't stay present at the end of the day. And because of that, he was incredibly frustrated and he was like sort of projecting it, right? And Mateo was like, I, I had an opportunity to reflect with the help of a therapist to take a look at like where that frustration was coming from. Dude, it was it was amazing. It's actually the most articulate that Mateo has been in a long time. I think for the for I think for the first time in his life, this was the first time I was like, whoa, that's a lot of words all together all at the same time. <laughs> but at the five minute mark, and Jamie's gonna bring it up like right now again. Yep. And I was getting like to me they're just Again, weird, you know, notes about stuff like Sean yawns through it, just <laughs> like the like he tries to contain it. You know, the containment yawn where he's like, he yep. does that. I saw it, man, you know, and then near the end, he does everything to like drop stuff while he while Mateo's talking. He's <laughs> clinking a cup. You know what I mean? That has his brand on it. Like he wants to promote it in the middle of Mateo being like really heartfelt and open. Right. And I'm going to guess it's because he doesn't want to do it while you're on our guest. You know, thank you very much for being here. Right. He doesn't want to do it while you're on, but he's totally okay to doing it to Mateo because it's his brother, you know, because so. I think that I think oh, that I'm Sean to, was doing I'm holding a yawn right now. <laughs> yeah. I think that yeah. Sean was doing it because he saw that I was lonely going away from being a kid and just playful for a moment. <laughs> so yeah. he wanted to bring me back to being just his fratello. Yeah. <laughs> I like, he needed to I smack like you that. back down, like, right? Yeah. Bring you back yeah, down yeah. to earth. Throwing yeah. poop at each other is what he prefers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Francis, thank you for being here, dude. Appreciate your time. Dude, my, my pleasure, man. I'm, you, you guys all know I'm a big fan of all three of you, so this is uh, it's an honor, guys. Hey, congratulations on the uh, – is it an imprint? Is it an initiative? What is the what, – what term do you guys use internally for Ghost Machine? Uh, so we're, we're a company yeah. unto ourselves. Yeah. But, you know, as you know, a lot of the problems that occur when you're a startup company are – you could get caught up in things like, well, what kind of paper are we going to use? How are we going to distribute <laughs> sure, and stuff? Like sure, that, right? sure. Yeah. And an image has created such a good ecosystem that allows us to work independently as ourselves, and they provide this, you know, vast network of ability to distribute and print. So that way, we can focus on the creative side and focus on other aspects of our business. Sure. Right. Sure. So it's to us, you know, like, you know we see a lot of things in, in the way the industry has been changing with a lot of people taking it upon themselves, yeah. especially like, you know, as, as you have done, Eric, and as, you know, Mateo is about to do, you know, I, I think there's a lot of, of credit to all of the little work that you don't get to see to do, to make that thing happen. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Dude. And we're, we're, we're just not as brave as you guys. Right. I think it's so that's it, why we're we're doing it collectively. No, I don't I don't I don't see it that way though. Like I see it more as you guys all arriving at the signal at the same time, if that makes any sense. I think the bravery component, yep. you know, as complimentary as that is, I think there's just a lot of people who arrive to the starting line. Um they either arrive there independently or as a collective, but the point is that you arrive there. Right. I think the the current marketplace, the current geography that we're about to go into as a as sort of a publishing slash creative collective. Right. It's uh, it's like people want to say, oh, we know what that space looks like. I don't think so. Right. Like it's actually important that people pioneer what the next uh, uh, the next version is, because it's already been sort of like if you go down the tried and true you're going to get tried and true results. But if you decide, sure. actually, we know like that's not optimized, whatever it may be that you, you identify, that's not optimized for my creative process. And you decide, okay, I'm going to be the first person to path, you know, pathfind my way through there. It's going to be painful. There's going to be a ton of mistakes, but it requires people to take that initiative. And I'm glad that we are 
uh, as far as resources is concerned, we're able to turn to each other and go like, dude, I really fucked that up. How'd you guys handle that? You know, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that in a heartbeat, especially now that more people are trying yeah. it. You know, um, one of the side conversations that we have when we go offline is we end up talking about our personal experiences. Yo, this is what the printer does. This is what the turnaround time does. Yeah. You know, here's what this distribution model looks like. And then somebody goes and goes off and do their own thing and adds to that collective knowledge, you know? So I'm glad that you guys are able to do it as a collective because that resource of being able to turn to, to the person to the left and right of you, that's amazing. You know, so congratulations, man. That's great. Thanks, man. Yeah, yep. thanks. Absolutely. Um, in case nobody knows what we're talking about. Sorry. I, I'm also going to promote that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, nice. See how you did that seamlessly? Um, it was part yeah, of the conversation, I Francis. I knew this it was, was happening. It was literally <laughs> was, you shifting into third gear from second. <laughs> it wasn't you randomly bringing yeah, in a cup see, as the, Mateo the was talking about his feelings. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Well, Dunking yeah, in a Lamborghini that, you know. with the logo on it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what that's that's how you're gonna get like uh sponsors and stuff like that on this show so sean's just thinking he's just thank you francis thank you you know um yeah no i mean that, that's the thing right is that like i think what was interesting you know before we announced in new york you know we all got a chance to hang out there and we had like a more or less like a creative company summit and we we kind of did this thing where we were going around in a circle where we're like, what does this mean to us? Yeah. Right. And the, one of the most common things is that we literally met each other, you know, metaphorically speaking at this crossroad of our careers. Yeah. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I feel like I'm constantly projecting where my career is going and a lot of times, to, to be perfectly honest, I, I rarely live in the present. I'm constantly living in the future, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Which kind of sucks because sometimes it, it robs me of that moment of accomplishment. Because in, in my brain, if I put in the work, that is just an inevitability, sure, right? Sure. And going yeah, with that absolutely. mind frame, it's also easy for me to say, okay, well, if I do nothing, this is how my career path is going to go. And that's perfectly fine, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It was predictable and it was safe, right? And what was what's interesting about this is that it's the opposite of predictable. I, I did not have this on my bingo card like two years ago, sure. you know. And is it going to be safe? I don't know, yeah. Yeah. right? And but the the thing is, is that you know I've been doing this long enough that I don't want to say that that all of our careers are foretold, sure. but it kind of is, you sure. know what I mean? The, the history has been paved. You can look back at every artist whom we've all followed throughout the years, and we know how everyone's careers go. And there's nothing wrong with, with any of that, but to me that, that feels really predictable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it, it was just, yeah, it was just, it was the perfect time for a lot of us who, who were craving change. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think the geography that That's you're awesome. stepping in, 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 you know, following up what you were coming from, which is like, you know, is it predictable, right? I think there's a lot of people who get a tiny bit intimidated by the idea of like, even though I'm a, you know, I'm a, a well-accomplished, well-regarded professional, you know, it, you know, these kinds of exercises, there's no way to predict whether or not it's going to be successful. If you go into that headspace, that gets a little murky for me. You know, sure. I always see it as, you know, the, the, the confidence stepping into that space isn't because the outcome is going to be successful. It's because of your conduct, right? You're going to conduct yourself in a level of confidence that's um, informed by how you've been doing business before, right? And I think that's where the success is. Am I going to approach this with the same level of professionalism that I did my previous projects, even though the outcome of this is sort of like unpredictable, even though the future is a tiny bit opaque. The answer, I would hope the answer is yes, right? And so the outcome is gonna be whatever it is, right? The victory is, hey, yeah. I'm gonna, this, this is now all hinging on my conduct and I'm gonna do it the same exact way that I've been doing it previously. I think some people, when they, go, when they get this opportunity, they shift into a weird gear where they don't hold themselves with the same level of accountability as they would, mm -hmm. they were working for somebody else. Right. That's weird to sure. me. Like, why would you do that? Right. And expect the same kind of outcome that does, that's weird to me, you know? So 
uh, I think that's the, I think that's a divining rod for a lot of like successful exercises, not in outcome, but in conduct. Right. Mateo, yeah, I, I think, go ahead, go ahead, Francis. No, no, go, go ahead. It's, yeah. it's your show. No, no, it's, you're the guest, man. You think continue. Sure. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll take up the space. <laughs> um, no, what, what I was just saying is that, you know, uh, aside from conduct, I totally agree with you. There, I think there's a sense of uh, pride of ownership, sure. right? It's like, if you are renting something, you know, obviously you want to, we, you want to make it nice while you're there, but you know, ultimately you're going to move. Right? Yeah. It's the same thing as like, you know, when I, when I work on the flash, I know that there is going to be a time where it's time for me to leave. And, you know, that was a long time ago. And then there would be a time when somebody else will, will step in and, and make it their own. Right. And with, with what we're doing, you can already tell, like, and I think this is where the nucleus of the people also matters a lot. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. You can see everybody, taking on more than, than they normally would, right? Because the thing is, is that the way this company is built, we, we own it all together, right? And we literally have vested interest in each other's success, Yes. right? Yes. And a lot of times when, when you look at the, the creator space, when you remove said creator from the equation, that project is dead, right? It's kind of like when you look at you know, like, like the YouTubers, right? There's, there's the guy who's making the content. And as soon as you remove them, that business is, is over. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And the way we've constructed um, our company is that if we were to leave, the company is scalable because what we're really focusing on are the characters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like, imagine if you were there, at, you know, I don't know with any luck, if we, have a fraction of the success of a Marvel or DC. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if you owned a percentage of those companies years ago, how sure. drastically different sure. um, your life would be, yeah. right? Yeah. So in, in, in a lot of ways, we've made a company that is very scale, scalable, right? Especially at the beginning, it, it's obviously running on the fumes of our previous success, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But at, at, at some point, when we if we turn the ship right, and we get the the readers to really buy into the characters and eventually the characters can overtake our names right like the characters can be much more popular than than us as individual creators sure. and once we make that transition now we're making a company that is scalable beyond what we can do yeah. well past the our abilities to even draw or write yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so there's there's a lot of um forward thinking in in making sure that the business and that, and that's why we're sharing everything. Right. So that's also part of the scalability of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very much, uh, forward thinking, but at the same time, it's, it's actually very grassroots because we realize it's going back to the core of what makes like, you know, comic books readable and enjoyable for, for people is, is they're about characters. Yes. Right. Yep. So that's why, like, you know, we have that tagline, you know, creators, you know, characters you'll love. Yeah. Right. Eventually you'll love them and that's why the books are launching as as ongoing series not a mini series you know we're not we're not creating netflix pitches sure. you know what i mean sure. we're, we're creating stories that are are meant to last for a long time like i mean you know when you talk to to brian hitch you know he's ready for like 40 50 issues right? yeah. everybody is mm -hmm. is so gung-ho to to really keep moving forward and i i think that goes with saying it's it's like we're building a house and everyone's like, yeah, I really want to build this shed yeah. because I know that next summer we're going to enjoy the hell out of that thing. You know, I'm going to build this amazing deck. So everybody is is literally pulling their their sleeves up and hammering away at the nails and building something that will last. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Yeah, I, that's I'm, awesome. I'm also like anytime we have these kinds of conversations with people, I I'm you know, I know you first and foremost as a creator. Right. So when I see when I think about this, uh, your history, I think about your your, you know, your body of work. It's it's a different and I'll speak for myself. Like it was a different gear. It's a completely different hat that you put on when you're having to deal with like the business component of it. Right. A lot of a lot of people I know can't make that transition. They often mm -hmm. see things in a very shallow arm's length perspective and not really think about 10 steps down the line, like the level of like, you know, use a term like scalability. I don't know too many people who incorporate that into their day to day, you know? So that's an interesting, how long did it take <laughs> yeah. you to get into that space where you go, 
obviously I can draw, obviously I can write, I'm a creator, but at some point you go like, oh, here's the administrative uh, businessman hat that I need to put on. Was that something that you took on organically or was that a, was that a struggle for you? Um, I don't know. It, it felt organic and, and I'll be honest, it's, I kind of found my way through that in the weirdest way, which is like YouTube, yep. right? Like yep. mm -hmm. it, I, I fell down a rabbit hole of stuff, yep. you know, it was like a few years ago, I was just getting back into playing with my cameras. It was just something I really enjoyed. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm literally, dude, I'm literally just watching reviews and five, six years ago when, when I think YouTube, I think, you know, guys getting hit in the balls, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like that yeah. kind of stuff. Right. And when I was watching reviews of things that I wanted to buy, I, I didn't know. I was suddenly realizing that, wait a second, some of these guys, I'll, I'll watch whatever, yeah. you know, even though it was the camera I was interested in. And I'm like, wait a second, you know, and then suddenly I fell down this rabbit hole. We're like, whoa, some of these people are employing storytelling. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the weirdest thing happened is that, you know, uh, you guys are in this landscape. You'll know that if you've watched anything about YouTube, YouTube strategies, you'll know that the hottest buzzwords in the last three years is storytelling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And everyone in the YouTube landscape is just catching up to something that we inherently already know how to do, right? So what's funny is that as I was finding reasons and just if, to justify my, my hobby mm -hmm. of buying cameras and playing around with it and shit, I fell down into the rabbit hole like, oh, well, what are these guys? is this like an actual functional business that they're doing? Mm. And then once I got into that, I was like, Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. This is a viable business for, for people. And then I started looking into how that stuff is structured. So what's interesting is, is, is that all of us at, at ghost machine, we bring in such a different like wealth of experience. Right. So in, in that case, like dude, we're, we're no, we're no dumb dumbs. Right. We, 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 we got a guy who, who, who developed a business plan for us, right? And one of the things that was was really important was that the business plan was built around our identities, right? So that way we weren't doing anything that was um, uncomfortable to us. Everything that we were doing was something that we would be naturally inclined to do as an extension of what we do creatively, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in, in that regard, you know, what, what's kind of neat about this company is that, you know, I don't, I don't need to ask PR for permission to video all the behind the scenes stuff sure. when we're traveling, sure. capture yeah. this and that. I can just do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what was like just a hobby can become like an asset to the company because now we have all of these footages that we can use either for social media or, or different things. Like yeah. when we're presenting the company to, to different avenues and stuff. Right. So, it's, it wasn't, I don't want to say it was easy, but it wasn't difficult because I was interested, right? Yeah. And I feel like anything that is difficult is only difficult because you're not really that interested. Right. You know? right. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're interested enough, you know, like, like, dude, like a few years ago, I didn't know how to edit videos. You know, the, 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 the hurdle of figuring out the software was too difficult, but you know, I, I didn't know what to do with all these video footages of my kids. Right. right. So I literally just practiced because I was trying to make little home videos to share with my family. You know, none of them are, are posted. It was just for, it was for me. It was for us. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, I was like, well, you know, if I'm doing this anyways, why don't I turn the camera on something that people would actually be interested in, which is the comic book stuff. Right. So that's how that happened. Yeah. Right? yeah. So. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the business had. I would say ironically came from just pursuing a hobby and trying to figure out ways of how a hobby can be sustained. And, you know, when, when you track it back, it's something you've all done, right? At some point you said, I want to become a comic book artist, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then it's, it's arguably it was more difficult for us to figure out back then how you were going to do that. Yeah. You know, like, dude, I went to the yeah. library right. and I went to like the letter C and I looked at comic book, history stuff and i would read every single interview you know i could almost like nerdily tell you how a lot of the the image guys broke in because of wizard sure, right sure. right you know so then in, in a sense that's business research because it's something that i'm interested in right and it's kind of the same thing with a lot of these things right it's it, it always it always stems from like a not not to sound so like 
like cheesy, but it always stems from a creative desire. And then when you have that desire, you know, you, you have the, the, the drive to learn because it's, it's not work. You're just having fun, man. Yeah, it's, man. it's, it's like, if you're, if you're playing a video game and you're buying, uh, you know, those old video game books, cause you'd want to know every nook and mm-hmm. cranny of the map, right? That's right. not work. It's fun. Yeah. Right. You know, and yeah, I think yeah, that's, absolutely. that's the key. So have you, Francis, what do you call it? I'm sorry, go ahead, Sean, go. I, I was just going to say, um, so I, my question for you was, you, you talked about the storytelling being like the buzzword in the YouTube stuff. Is that what led you down the, the rabbit hole, so to say, of creating a work in progress? Did you see like, how can I document my day, but in a narrative fashion? Uh, at the beginning, not at all. I just wanted to play with my camera. Oh, okay. I literally okay. just, I, I, I had just bought this new camera and, but here's the thing. I, I have the, the foresight of the fact that, you know, as Jamie can attest to who you guys work with, I am a very slow editor. Right. And I actually worked with Jamie on the, the second episode. Uh, but it, it was one of those things where do I want oh, so that was the efficiency? It was our Jamie that you were talking about because I listened to that episode today, like a few hours ago as it was working. Yeah, it's I was the, like, oh, he has a guy named Jamie as well. Yeah. He, he is our guy. It's the same Jamie. Ah, yeah. that's awesome. Jamie, yeah. <laughs> that's the same. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, this is where Jamie zooms in at Eric's reaction, right? Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with your, your, with your stuff. Um, yeah. So, it, so yeah, man, I, I don't know, dude. Like it was like the, the, the earlier edits, honestly, was just me figuring out the software. And a lot of it was that, look, man, like we, we all were, you know, write and draw comic books. The stuff, storytelling is, is rhythmically natural for us to do, right? Mm-hmm. And when I was putting the edits together, you know, some some things felt right, some things felt wrong. It it was just the earlier part was me figuring out the the software, right? And then at at some point, you know, I was coming to the realization of what I was doing and how I could combine it. Right? It's dude, it's it's a lot like art, right? Like I remember a long time ago, you know, I, I didn't go to art school, and I remember my my ex at the time, she went to art school, and I was you know, doing the, the watercolor and ink wash stuff. And I was like, hey, hey, check this out. I discovered this new technique. And he's like, yeah, we, we learned that like the first year <laughs> of, of university. And it took me like two years to come to it because I, I had to stumble across yep. it, right? Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of times in, in art, we do a lot of things naturally and we can't always deploy it as, as a weapon in our arsenal until we come to the realization that we're doing it right and then once we're doing it the next time we're we're doing it with uh, intent and purpose right yeah so the the beginning part was literally me just just stumbling across and then at some point i figured out that that's essentially what it was is storytelling and you know and you know not to get super obsessive i became obsessed with retention because to me the a, a good retention meant a good story mm-hmm. right sure yeah. you know so I, I was i was even talking to um, Peter Tomasi about it, where, where to me, it's, could you imagine if you could track somebody reading a comic book and figure it, figure out when you're losing them or when that, that interest is peaked, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so then on, on YouTube, I can, I can figure that out, right? So there, there's like, you know, I, I'd be lying to you if I said there weren't some stuff that I learned on video that I didn't bring to my comic book storytelling because I knew that, hey, this is where you're going to lose somebody. Yeah, right? that's and fascinating. Just up it, yeah. right? Dude, it's, it's such a rabbit hole, man. And the interesting thing is, is that, you know, re- retention isn't always even connected to the view count, right? Like some of the stuff right. that I find the most successful creatively has the best retention. And that means whoever watched it, watch it from beginning to end because they were, you know, they, they, they were, yeah. I guess, caught up in the story. And some of the ones with the, with the higher views, the, the, the retention was, was, was rather low, right? So, so to me, that was very fascinating. And, and it was to me, very indicative of comic books, right? You know, you have like this, this industry that is 
is, you know, as we all know, it's shrunk relatively to what it was like when we were kids, right? And yet there are people who are really focused and in tune to the, to the books that they're reading. They're, they're, they love this shit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's figuring out all those things. So, so to me, the, the two go, go hand in hand in such a natural way. And, yeah. and, and it's funny that I literally just fucking stumbled across it because I was just playing around. You yeah. Know? That's, a, that's, yeah, yeah a, that's an interesting exercise to go and see, um, you know, the, the re somehow finding an analog to comic books from YouTube to go like, here's where it dips, you know, how could I now implement that into my storytelling? Maybe you could comics? find a way to do it with digital comic books. Possibly. Maybe I'd insert like some sort of contract when you buy a new digital <laughs> yeah. comic book to give, you know, permission. They, they, yeah. They probably could track that. How, lo how long are they staying on a page? Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. How yeah, grisly yeah. are they, probably. are they, um, are they scrolling? Right. You know, dude, it's, it's, it's crazy bad. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you guys look at your analytics and stuff like that. To me, that's, that's so fascinating, man. It's, yeah. um, you know, I don't yeah. know if, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who has like control not... of the YouTube studio. But, I, I, uh... I, I look at it sometimes. Yeah. I don't go down the rabbit hole. Um, I mean, honestly, yeah. like this is just the three of us doing what we feel like doing. So I, I think, yeah. I Dude, think the minute we... that we try to do something different just to hold people's attention, then we're losing what we, what the show is. Yeah. Let's speak on that really quick. And I think it ties perfectly to what Francis is talking about. And you guys use the same term to, multiple times now, which is like, depending on what your motivations are, right? You can try to look at the animat, the, those, the analytics and gamify the heck out of it. Like people who understand that yeah, yeah, at the right. DNA level of what that means, I am fascinated by those guys. Oh, you do X. Like I, I've yeah. heard Jamie talk in our back room about like, yeah. you do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this. I'm like, and it, it leads to this. I'm like, that's freaking amazing amazing but that's a full-time job for yeah, somebody yeah, and yeah. they absolutely yeah. inhabit that space and there's a reason why the professionals at it to sean's point though i lean more on that side of the fence which is like i'm doing this because i'm having fun with my friends and if then essentially if, if i don't lean too hard into the analytics side right there is a lot of stuff that i personally i'm leaving on the table in as far as understanding what that's what that success quotient means that formula yeah. for success but i know me enough to go i'm not to, this is to your point now francis you're like i'm not interested in that right like yeah. Yeah. i'm having fun doing x and zero mm, ten percent of my brain is interested in seeing how that works but no part of me yeah. ever wants to wade into that pool further or deeper than my ankles, you know, like that's yeah. cool, but that's Dude, not like really that, what I do, you know? A, a, a thousand percent, a yeah. thousand percent, right? Because here's the thing, right? Like my analytics tell me, Hey man, do more tutorials. Yeah. If, yeah. if you look at my stuff, there's, yeah. there's barely any because um, I haven't figured out yet how to make tutorials that are fun for me. Sure. Right? Because, because to me, make, making these, it's the same thing as with, with you guys talking, right? Like, you guys do this because you guys get to hang out right. Right? and every now and then you have this these rotating cast of, of people who show up, you know, at, at your dinner while you guys are chatting and, and, and sort of try to integrate within your flow. You guys are like those, those uh, gymnast skip rope guys. Right. And, and every now and then we, we, we try to hop in. Right. And, yeah. The double Dutch team. Uh, Jamie, can you, can you figure out how to do a 3D thing with their heads doing an app stack? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he can do it, dude. He's, he's really good at those motion tracking. I've, yeah. I've seen him do it. Yeah. Right. But so, so that's the thing. Are you right? saying because that we're like, not challenging you know, Jamie enough? Yeah. Every single chance that I get, I'm going to throw things at him to try to figure out. You know, Jamie, I um, want fireballs so coming out of my like, hands. No. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. hate this show he's, so much. He's going to do it. You know, he's going to do it. <laughs> Spiderweb. Spiderweb. <laughs> All right, sorry. Actually, I'm Jamie, <laughs> don't, don't do it. Let's just have Mateo looking like an idiot doing that with no effects. <laughs> I think I'll look like, like an idiot anyways, even you. with the spider webs of the fireballs, but <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. Who, who yeah. reached out to whom, Francis? <laughs> no. Like, who reached out to whom? Was it was it Sean that said, hey, do you want to come and hang? Was it Mateo who said, 
Because me personally, I'm protecting you from this space. You know, to, I'm like, hey, there's a lot of great <laughs> ideas, but I don't think I'm going to invite that guy into the clown clown house that is this place. Was it you that reached out to Sean and said, hey, can let's let's hang out, let's have a conversation? Nope. Uh, Sean reached out. Yeah, yeah he but, did not. Uh, he did John, not dude, prompt you I'm, about what was going to happen, I'm, right? Dude, come on! I watch the show. All right. I know everything. No, right. I'm just making thing. sure, man. You know. So, so, so that's the thing I do. I'm, I'm either a masochist because I was like, you know, I, I, I was I, I felt like uh, that 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 dude standing in the, the rafters waiting for, for somebody to ask me to dance. Right. And I was just like, oh, man, you know, I, hope, I hope they ask. And then now here we are dancing. Right. Right. Uh, for right. better or worse. And now Jamie's right? going to animate but, us dancing. Yeah, I'm just I'm yeah. asking because yeah. like yeah. you you knew the show, you saw the you know these guys just throw poop at each other. The the guy <laughs> at the bottom was just talking about like adding fireball effects and Spider Man webbing. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. all right, okay. Look, Jamie's just trying to get you some retention. Okay. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. You By know, the that, way, dude, that's the thing, man. Like, oh no, go ahead, go Francis. Ahead. Then I wanted to tell you something related to what you were talking about before all the shenanigans with fireballs and everything. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, that that that's the thing is that like I we, we look, man, we've all been around this business long enough that that we all can see the easiest path to success, right? Even with like with YouTube, you can very much delineate. You know, obviously there's there's some element of luck to it, mm. but at the same time, if you can read those analytics, you know, the clear path, all you need to do is, is have the time. Right. Right. But the thing is, is that w one of the things that when, when I was talking to, to Jamie about it, is that like, you know, um, cause you know, Jamie had, he, he was very like smart about it. He had like all these strategies and stuff like that. And I said, listen, man, like I, you know, I think you did some great stuff editing the, the second video, but a lot of the reason why I'm doing this is that I don't, to me, these videos are almost like my version of, do you guys remember like live journal yeah. right? or blogger? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just that, right. Yeah. To me, this is a, this is a new version of that, right. Yeah. Instead of, of me writing down well, what the hell happened, it's, it's me um, visually telling a story. Right. So it yeah. was hard for, for, for me to incorporate somebody else in because then I'm asking somebody to, put on my own clothes or, or speak in my voice. Right. I don't want to ask anybody to do I, that. I understand that. that yeah. Not, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, and then dude, that's why it's so slow, man. That's why it's so slow. I filmed that thing almost two years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Like editing that stuff feels like going back and coloring your old drawings. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's painful. It's a painful practice, but at, at the same time, it's, you know, it, you, you can't have it, be your voice if somebody else is, is editing you. sure and that's why like you know as as fascinated as i am with the with the retention and stuff like that to me that's more i i look at it less so in in what you know oh dude what, what's gonna make people go ooh ah right you know like that that bang bang youtube style shit right it's it's more to to me it's more hearing somebody who you know let's let, you know back in the old twitter days and like oh yeah i read the entire graphic novel you know what i mean like i want to that's that's what i want to hear and that's what i'm trying to achieve is to try to see how far along did you come on this ride with me right because the thing is is that mm -hmm. you know with with every story there's there's something at the end and if you didn't watch till the end then it means that there's an aspect in my storytelling that could be improved yeah. right yeah. And so that's how I, I look at it. Right. It's, it's, um, it's, 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 again, it's, there's nothing like that in comic books, right? There's the, the only way we can track it is perhaps sales, but even then that's not sales are not a clear indication of the quality of a book. Sure. Right. We all know that. Right. And, you know, but in this case, there's, there's, there's numbers to go with it. And, and yeah. to me, that's, that's fascinating. That's awesome. That's how your, that's yeah, how absolutely. your brain is built, Francis. Yeah. It's completely too, different than, than, than Maddie's and yeah, no, no, I, I just wanted to add to what Francis was saying earlier, and, and even now it is uh, is uh, all explanation. Uh, I, I saw like the, your intention, and because earlier you were talking about tutorials and wanting to find your way of incorporating a story 
into a tutorial or, or still finding a way to make it original or making your own, I just, uh, it just got stuck in my head. The, the one, uh, the video, uh, that you posted on how to make a cover and, uh, on on one hand you see you you see the video and you you're doing a cover but the voice is telling a story and it's uh i think part of it is one of your story from your life when you were a childhood of your uncle building a bike or something and then you have the oh, yeah, yeah, story yeah. of Shazam on the other hand that and and this two story kind of mix up and they they you jump from one story to the other and it was fucking beautiful like it was great so oh, dude, thank you so much I, I loved it so and and in general like I loved the 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 general feel of 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 the videos that you're posting on your channel what I love is that you find this soft spot between a, a really genuine thing and a, a really genuine stories and on the other end. Uh, so much, uh, you know, production value. Like they're beautiful aesthetically, mm -hmm. yeah. And you have I this agree. genuine I thing agree. going at the same time, which I think is it's great, especially in our world in our business, because by doing comics, like nobody sees us. I mean, you you start seeing us because now, like, uh, comic book shows and conventions are getting popular, so more people are attending them. But in general, if you look if you look at the past, like. Nobody knew how you know the the artists would look like, and nobody had a a kind of direct relationship to them. So, by doing this really genuine thing, which I think is what we're trying to do as well here, by just yeah. you know hanging out in this space and, and talking, I think there's an advantage to it because people are starting to know us as people with our taste outside Absolutely. necessarily just comic books. Yeah. And that could be really useful, in my opinion, in the business uh, when when it comes to doing to do our thing, you know, which is what you're doing now. And uh, I think that could be a nice uh, a nice way to to you know challenge the two to uh, channel energies for the future to promote yeah. our stuff. Oh. Yeah, Thanks, I, no, I agree. I think I think Mateo's one hundred percent right. And I and Francis, your YouTube channel is kind of like something I look at a lot because the quality is so good and, mm -hmm. and the intention behind it is so clear. It's like, I, I watch it and feel like I, I gotta, I gotta up my game a bit. Um, oh, but yeah. it's, inspi <laughs> it's inspiring. It really is. It's, it's a great, your, your, Thanks, your Thanks. videos are incredible. Um, but Thanks. yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. Cause like, like, like I said, right. Like, um, you know, a, a lot of it is, is really figuring out the story. Cause like, a lot of early on, I'm like, oh, I got to use my, my nice camera. That's like, you know, like as Mateo, I, I love that he enjoyed that video because like it opens like with, with crappy cell phone videos and it ends with cell phone videos. And that's that, that to me was, was a very uh, sobering moment in that people connect to stories, right? People won't connect to the best cameras. Now, mind you, I'm still interested in them because that's part of my, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Interest, you know, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, but sure. At, at the same time, and and it's you know not to flip it around with with art as well. It it goes back to that man. Like that's why you know when when you guys were were talking about um, was it you guys were talking about this this comic book uh, something road right? Um, oh, Phantom Road. And, oh, Phantom Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you know uh, it's a fantastic artist, right? Like it's it's the kind of art that that we all look at and say, man, there's, there's a lot more work that goes into that. Yeah. You know, like when you look at a him or a Tanchi Sonic or an Alex Toth, mm -hmm. right. We see it, we see the work that's not there. Right. You know, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's kind of the, the same thing with that is that ultimately it's about the story and it's about getting us drawn in. Right. And, and every now and then, you know, when we're inking or drawing, we get very illustrative, right? You know, we're like, oh man, I'm gonna render the hell out of this thing. And then every now and then you pull back and you say, oh, I don't, this isn't really needed in the story, right? You know, like, mm -hmm. dude, like it's, I, I can get like, so fucking like, like just esoteric about this shit, right? Because it's, it's, it's all so connected in that, you know, you know, look, man, like we all go through a time where we're like, ah, 
I don't know if I want to do comics anymore and this is getting kind of boring, right? And every now and then you you need something that that brings you back, right? And 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 a lot of times it's it's that whole that whole shit, man. You 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 leave a bit and then you you come back realizing, oh shit, man, like there's there's so much more to this job and there's so much in this world that that informs the job and then there's so much of the job that informs the world right and it's 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 dude it's it's a real fucking mind fuck once you really think about it all and it ultimately goes back to making things as enjoyable as we can right because the thing is, is that you know going back to a, a thing that eric said earlier is that you know in a roundabout way he had mentioned a sort of touched on the fact that you we could get very results driven when when you go back to the core of what made us do what we do it wasn't the result it was the enjoyment of doing it right it was the act of doing yeah. it right? my my kid doesn't draw because there's going to be a finished drawing at the end she likes it because it's just because it's fun right, yeah. right. and that's right. the thing with a lot of the stuff it's figuring out ways to make it fun again yeah. right? and that's why like so I switched back to traditional and it, it was it's so weird man it's so weird to to delve so into the technical part of things and then circle right back to a, a pencil and a paper and you know it's yeah. all right see it, the, it's it's a real it's a real mind thought. you just tapped into what i really wanted to get to in this conversation was you have recently returned to traditional media after i think a very long time of working strictly digital yeah and about like six seven years yeah yeah so talked like what what made you jump back was it that you were no longer having fun did the did the digital work just start to feel like production and you were missing the joy of creating <laughs> sorry um, that's an incredibly leading question your honor you know what i mean like he Sean just is such said, a, i'm just listen you could have just left that question open you could have just literally like you, you didn't have to taint it with like is it was it because you I'll, were I'll dead inside sure when you were doing through eric from now on to, to oh get the Oh my god, uh, that was awful. Feedback. Francis, you, I think you understand what he was getting at, but that was just like Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, no, it's um uh so like when when I <laughs> Sorry, I'm just enjoying the show. If I had popcorns here now, it'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. It's you know, I'm, I'm gonna fanboy out and say it's it's so weird to like listen to this shit and laugh, and then now I'm I'm in it, and I'm just like, did I did I like walk into like an episode of like Friends or something? But like, you know, the the, the low rent version of uh, Friends. <laughs> oh my god, that was just. The... Is it because uh, when you were doing digital, it killed you inside, and that's why you want to? It's like I, what the fuck, I, Sean. I was I was I was. <laughs> dead inside and <laughs> as as with eric i am also a brother of black shirts as you can see <laughs> um you know like every time like you guys you're the handsome like, version of eric though <laughs> <laughs> this is actually it's our really first test because we want to switch to a different filipino a more good looking one so if you do if you do well, we still have twenty minutes to convince us, Francis. Whoa. But you're, you're, and, and, you're getting well, there. We, so we, the fact that you have editing capabilities does help. I'm just I'm just oh, saying. Oh yeah, Francis, definitely. It's, it's He's not gonna do it for you. <laughs> no, Jesus you know, Christ. I, 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 look, I'm I'm not gonna rob Jamie of a job yet again. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but seriously, dude, like you know, you you will never understand that you're so so on my bed, like you know, the I have one of those bed drawer things. The, the joys of like waking up, pulling that thing and just blindly grabbing a shirt before you go take a shower. I know that I have like a nine out of 10 chance of that I'm going to pick the right shirt, which is a plain black shirt. Yeah. Some days it might have a pocket. Yeah. Some days it might not. Yeah. Some, right? some days uh, it might be a V-neck. Some days it may have a collar, but it's black and it's going to work. That's right. It's, I have a different solution for that. I never change my clothes. <laughs> yeah. That's that's actually not a shirt. That's a tattoo that looks like a shirt and he just walks around like that. <laughs> let's not let's not lose Sean. I think the core of Sean's question is really uh, oh, yes. important, yeah. which is something sure. that that you spent 7 years. That's a good chunk of time going down digital. I suspect it's got something to do with like being as productive and forward savvy as possible. But what brought you back? What made you say, "Hey, let me try to dish traditional again?" Uh so a lot of it was um 
when I started editing videos, I was like, holy shit, I'm spending a lot of time on the computer, right? Yeah. Like, I would say in the last two years, I, I finally had to get glasses. Mm. And I think I was like, oh, is, is it a combination of me getting older? Or yeah. is it the fact that I'm literally staring at the screen all day long? Yeah. And then I do it all night long when I'm editing, right? And I was just craving something, right? But what what was funny was that so here's a funny story. So, so the, the initial reason was that I was doing these Walking Dead covers. There were six of them, and they're all connecting. And, you know, most of my stuff is is digital. And I'm like, you know what? Let me throw my art rep a bone, and I'll draw these traditionally. Yeah. So he's got something to sell. Yeah. Like, purely, purely from an economical standpoint. Sure. Right? Um, so, you know, I... Of course, you know, I, I start drawing this thing, but I'm, dude, dude I'm, I'm afraid, man. So I, I, I penciled it digitally. I printed it out on the board, right? You know, that the classic blue line thing. Mm-hmm. And as I was inking it, I was like, oh, this fucking sucks, man. This is really sapping the joy out of drawing because it, it felt like there was a, a line there that I couldn't step away from, right? Mm. You know, it, 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 just, it just felt like, hey, here's a line. Don't go outside of it. Don't go beside it. Draw right on the line. It felt so rigid, right? So then the the next cover, I'm like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'll print it out and light box it, mm-hmm. right? That that will fix it. I did it. It was also not enjoyable because I was like, oh, now I changed this screen for another screen, like glaring <laughs> sure. right at my eye, sure. right? Not mm-hmm. enjoyable yeah. at all, right? And then. But again, it, it gave me what I needed, which was the the structure of, of digital, of being able to move things around, all of the efficiencies, right? Like, you know, I want this hand a little bit sure. smaller. Yep. I want this a little bit bigger. Yep. Right? That's super easy. We all know the benefits of digital. So about halfway through, I was like, fuck, this really sucks, man. This is really turning into a real pain in the ass, and it's becoming extremely unenjoyable. I'm just going to draw on the page, right? So I connected all the stuff. I looked at my layout, and I just drew on the page. Yeah. Right? And I was like, yeah holy shit, I need this car to be a little bit smaller. What do I do, right? And I'm like, fuck, I guess I got to erase it, right? I'm like, oh, if I erase it, I got to do it again. How, this is really fucking inefficient, right? Right, right. But there was something enjoyable about walking the tightrope with no net, right? So by the time I finished the last two, again, I just drew right on the page. It was so enjoyable to not know what was going to happen to feel like i had so little like control yeah. over what was what the results was going to be yeah that was so weird and, and liberating so then when i started doing it for interior pages i realized that the way i've worked for a long time digitally is that you know most of the time our, our initial instincts are, are pretty correct right like you know when we do layouts we've all gone through this we do a small layout we, we blow it up and we're like oh man it's lost so much of the energy right so then when i worked digitally i felt like there was no energy lost because i could literally use that that thumbnail and, and build on top of that mm-hmm. right and if i need it a little bit smaller it's easy enough to shrink right so i was used to going with what my first initial instinct was but when I started drawing pages, when a character needed to be a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and I would have this internal struggle, like, oh, do I erase this or do I not erase it? Because it's a good drawing, but I just need him a little bit over there for the composition. And ultimately, I would erase it. And, you know, I, I came to this, this mind frame, where like, well, if I've already erased it, is there another way to do this panel? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So then I would allow myself to explore a new way to draw the panel. And then that way, if I didn't like it, I'll just erase it and draw it right back how I, I how I did it. Yeah. And ultimately, what would always end up happening is that that new version was a lot better. There was something livelier about it because at that point, I've already iterated on the idea. I've already, you know, I've I've went from from the thing that I, I thought I wanted to do, and now I was getting to look at it from a different perspective. Yeah. So I found that that penciling right on the page without light boxing a thing allowed me the not the ability it was um it was allowing me to make mistakes and and rectify that right yeah. and you know so so one of the things that that 
we say all the time at the company, and, and Jeff has said this a lot, not, not to bring it back to Ghost Machine, but I will. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I love this this quote, which is that, you know, in, in our company, the, the cement is always wet, right? Mm -hmm. Because the moment that the cement dries, it means that you're fixed, you're, you're standing in place, you're not going anywhere, right? So what I like about working that way is that if I work digitally, my, 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 my mind is, is, it's too efficient in that it's already done. The cement is dry. You're going to go with this, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if I've erased it, you know, I've effectively burned the bridge behind me. So I now have to figure out a new way. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. there, therefore the, the cement is always wet. If I'm working traditionally, as long as there's an eraser there, and as long as the thing is erased and I have no way to get that back, I can figure out a new way, a new, a new thing. Sure. Right. And and I think that has made the joys of it so much fun, man. Like even to the point where where dude, I, I used to use like the technical pads and you know, little, little clicker pads, like mm -hmm. the 0 0.5, because mm -hmm. it's efficient. I don't want to erase, I don't want to sharpen. Mm -hmm. That's 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 you know, if you add up all that sharpening time, that's seconds, <laughs> that's minutes, that's hours a week, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I I can't I can't be doing that. But um but I I, I fucking swung the other way now i'm buying like normal pencils that you sharpen you know yeah and you know not, not the clicker kinds and like the kinds that get into a little nub and then you get that little extender right so i i got really into that you know like i bought like this black wing sharpener i'm like why is this sharpener thirty dollars that's insane why isn't it two dollars <laughs> right then when i bought it then i'm like oh my god this is amazing yeah. you know and it's and then i then i got into like fountain pens right and it's just like oh my god you know it's this is so much fun right yeah. it, it, it's just uh yeah it just I, I, everything is is geared towards cooling my brain that 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 this is still a lot of fun and you know what it, it still is you know like there's no need mm -hmm. to fool it anymore you know because it's like oh shit this is this is fun man what we do is fun and i think as long as you figure out how to do it that way it makes the the job easier right yeah. you know it is a job but you know if you're sitting there you might as well enjoy it right yeah you're making oh, sean's yeah, yeah. Uh, all your entire rhetoric is just making sean so happy because he's such a <laughs> like you know it's not that he's against digital which is not not what he broadcasts at all people flip it on him sometimes and they, 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 he makes it they they phrase it in such a way that he's pointed about, hey, he's all about traditional, which is not where he's coming from. He just what he's saying, and I think it's it aligns to where you're coming from, Francis, which is like he just finds a lot of joy in doing things traditionally, right? Like, like and to your to your point earlier, which is like, you know, find a way to find joy in the thing that you're doing, knowing full well at the end of the day it's still a job to do, right? So, you know, Sean and Mateo find joy in doing things traditionally. You know, I do things digitally, but there's joy in that as well. You know, initially yeah, I, it was dude, for don't get me wrong, man. Yeah, I, yeah. Initially it was yeah, for efficiencies. I, I, you know. Yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed working digital. Yeah. It just got to the point where it got boring because. The, the same thing I'm 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 saying now. I said this about digital like five years. Ago. Right, right. You know, and and I think a lot of it was a lot of the mistakes that people try to do is when you're working digital is replicate what you do traditionally. Yes, right. right. If you're going right. to do that, why don't you just work traditionally? Right. That's the most efficient way to do it. Right. right. So like every now and then, you know, I would embrace the the digital aspect of the work. Right, and I think. You know, when, when you're talking about like artistic styles, right, I, I think we're, when you work in, in a medium that you're not familiar with, you're, you're forced to draw in the most natural way that that you do your thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And you find ways. Right. So, like, you know, I, I, I found that when I was working digitally, there was a new a new style, a new avenue for my work that I didn't know was there right. because I, I, I stopped trying to replicate what I was doing. Yeah. Right. It's yep. just there was no if, if I want ink wash, why don't I just ink wash it? Mm -hmm. Why do, why do I need to try to replicate it digitally? Right. The, the whole point of it is that it's natural and it's, it's this, this, it's this thing that you're trying to, it's, it's unwieldy, right. You know what I mean? It's, that's the whole point of it. Right. But with, with digital, it's, it's about control, but at the same time, there kind of is an ability to be spontaneous because you know what, when you're drawing in a spontaneous way digitally, it's okay. If you make a mistake, it's fine. Yeah. Control Z. Yeah. Right. But if that one stroke, that one mistake that you did looks great, you just, just leave it. Yeah. 
right? You know, you, you, mm-hmm. you have the ability to, to travel through time and look at how shit could be and how shit could not be, right? Yeah. So it's, it's super, it's super easy, right? And, and I think it's, it's less, so, so for me, it's less so the, the fact that traditional is, is better than, than digital. Yeah. It's, it's literally just, I just got bored and I did something different. There you go. And yeah. I'm sorry about the dog signs. And then at some point, I'm sure I'll, I'll come to this conclusion. And it, it, dude, it's the same thing, man. Every, everything becomes old. Everything becomes hard. Yeah. And it's it's ultimately about, you know, it's, it's something hard. And right now, working traditionally is still difficult for me as I could do that. And I think the, the fun is the fact that it's challenging. That's it. Yep. Because it's... I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I get it. It's just, All right, dude. We are at hour 23. Thank you so much for your time, Francis. Thank you, Francis. Thanks a lot, brother. Dude, thank you so much. So you've been promoted. So now Eric is fired and we have a new Filipino in the house. <laughs> Woo! Congratulations, pal. Yeah. You now have you now have my curse. I can't I can't make the analog to like a movie where you hand over the curse to somebody else who's willing to take it. But congratulations, dude. It's all yours. All right. Oh, per- perfect timing, dude. <laughs> Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. No, dude. Seriously, thanks so much, guys. Like, seriously, Yo, thank you, guys you man. are doing amazing work. Fan thank you, stuff. Francis. Uh, both of your, both your work on and off the the podcast. You guys are amazing. You guys do cool shit, and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, buddy. Good Regardless luck. of what Eric says, you guys are doing great. Yeah, you guys, <laughs> are, you guys are doing fine. You guys are all so awesome. Congratulations and good luck with the uh, the publication with the company. Yeah, absolutely, Francis. man. Looking yeah, forward to seeing what you guys do next. Like your what what comes out of it your the the your next venture and the the books that will come out of this new venture all right pal. us too man us too. get back Thanks, to your guys. family we're gonna hit the stop button don't close your tab hey guys my new sketchbook dumb shark is finally out that's great fratello congrats eric what do you think wow mateo this book has really changed how i think about art the style, the details, the inking techniques, not to mention the colors. Everything on this book is off the chart. You are so far ahead of any other artist, especially me. I know I always say I don't like your Mr. Freeze book, but that's actually a lie. I was just jealous of your incredible talent because I love everything you do. And sadly, I know deep in my heart that I'll never be at your extraordinary level. You truly are the best artist on planet Earth. This book is a game changer, man. I think everyone out there should go and order Mateo's new art book, Dumb Shark, before it sells out. Gee willikers, Eric, that was an incredible endorsement. You really made me want to buy it. How can I get my hands on it? You can find it on www.essentialsequential.com or if you're in Europe, you can order it on www.pulps.fr. Wow, Eric, I didn't know you were such a big fan of mine. Thank you. I really don't need to add anything else. You said it all. What an asshole. Wait, what?